Welcome to Slash Forward. I hope you're doing well since we last met. In this episode, we're watching a harrowing tale of surviving in the Australian bush with Wolf Creek. If you've ever been afraid of being abducted in the wilderness, subscribe to the channel to acclimate yourself to your worst fears. Let's get to it. We open with an understanding that many people go missing in Australia every year, and some are never found. And then we meet Ben, picking up a used automobile for a trip he's taking with two Sheilas. Then we meet them, Liz and Christy, as they soak up their final beach vibes before embarking on an inland holiday. And they discuss how Ben may be sweet on Liz, so they'll need to cultivate that and try to get him to make some serious decisions regarding his claims about having a girlfriend. After getting the mechanicals checked, they load their snacks into the car, and that evening they enjoy one last rager before relaxing on their vacation. And you guys, it looks like so much fun! The next morning's endless preparation before leaving involves one last skinny dip for Liz. And then they finally start their trip, completely exhausted and smelling like straight up musty ass. Along the way, they travel taj themselves deep into mainland Australia, an isolated and barren hellscape, the center of which contains a little hiking spot called Wolf Creek. The crew eventually pulls into a caravan park where they smoke out under a mystical galaxy sky. Ben shares a UFO story about a bloke in the outback. While driving through the desolate wilderness, he caught a flash of light in the sky. Then he heard a boom and all the electronics in his car died. This helps set the playfully spooky tone of their trip. They break camp in the morning and set out on the next six hour stretch of their drive, which is surrounded by pristine wilderness. They eventually turn off to take advantage of the last petrol station before nowhere. While the ladies split off, Ben dicks around and meets Graham, who offers to finish him off. During the lull, Christy tells Ben to get his shit straight so he can hook up with Liz. Then they'll find some random bloke for her, and it'll be all Gucci. As they talk, Liz is leered at by the beer bellies inside, who can barely contain their excitement about the fresh meat. Ben doesn't take kindly to their boorish behavior, and simple Graham, of all people, keeps the peace. So they continue on, and eventually arrive at the least popular park in Australia. After stocking up on supplies, they excitedly venture out onto Earth that is slightly different from normal for them, and they eventually arrive at the lip of a giant meteor crater, which is pretty cool. After a bit, Liz grabs the bog roll and heads off to dig a hole. Ben joins her and with a mere head tilt expresses his intent and achieves reciprocation. And now that that's settled, we hope he can stop showing off so damn much. As they attempt to leave, they realize their watches have stopped. Similarly, the car is completely dead. Ben can't find anything obviously wrong under the bonnet, and with sunset coming, they recognize that they'll have to spend the night. Ben brings up the UFO story again, which is timed perfectly with approaching lights they eventually see are attached to a terrestrial vehicle. What the bloody hell are you mob doing out here? piloted by a friendly bloke with automotive repair skills. He confirms that their coil's cactus. He can fix it, but his gear is back at his camp, which is the opposite direction from town. They discuss it briefly and agree to go, so long as it doesn't cost too much money, because they're down to just a few quid. In a promising turn, he balks at the idea of them paying for his hospitality. So they get roped up and find themselves at the mercy of the guide truck, leading them to parts unknown. They can see little of what lies ahead, but we'll just imagine they're being dragged to a quaint little B&B. After a few hours, we have to wonder what was this bloke doing all the way up at Wolf Creek? But no one asked him that. And then they roll up to camp. They all enjoy some refreshing water around the campfire, a classic treat. And old Mick tells him about life in the outback. Ben tries to find a way to relate to his bush life, but Mick gets the sneaking suspicion he's taking the piss. Then things get a bit tensely awkward, and Liz tries to convince Ben to treat him well since he's doing them a solid. But then she goes to have a one-on-one -on -one and rushes him to complete the free job before they all doze off. Liz wakes up in a somewhat different position than how she fell asleep. She takes a moment to writhe around and cry, but then gets down to business with a piece of broken glass. She surveys the area and finds the prospects to be unpromising, but she slips out and sneaks around to see what she can find. The engine is in pieces and their gear is covered in blood. She gets her shoes but is prevented from running by the sound of Christy screaming. She pulls up and takes a peep at Mick's man cave and sees a bloodied Christy tied to a post begging for her life, while Mick takes the piss, finding the look on her face to be absolutely precious. He proves to be completely unperturbed by her revulsion of him. Thinking quickly, Liz goes out and lights the car on fire and tosses the propane into the campfire, causing an explosion. Mick runs out and curses himself for leaving the fire going, and really, the self-doubt he must feel is the true torture here. Then Liz doubles back and hides in his shop while trying to pick her spot. After Mick spends a little time discussing his plans for Christy, Liz jumps out with his rifle. He tries to talk her down and she manages to open up the side of his neck. She tries desperately to double tap, but she's unable to make it happen. Instead, they're forced to creep the keys and hop in his truck. As she works on finding the clutch, he lumbers out and blasts out their windscreen. After ducking the shots, Liz tries to run him down before pulling an exaggerated three-point turn out of there. They go careening through the wilderness, just barely managing to stop before reaching a cliff. 
With lights bearing down on them in the distance, they push the truck over to buy them some time. Then they find an intimate little spot to tuck away and watch silently, as Mick sorts things out in his brain. When he wanders off down the trail, they circle back and find he's kept the keys with him, so they use their time to run back to camp to find another means of escape. Having to pause regularly to deal with Christy's shortness of breath and anxiety over imagining what months of torture must be like, Liz instructs her to wait while she goes it alone. She does manage to quickly find his garage, but also spends some time poking around, and finds evidence of Mick's success as a tourist trap, which includes video from a family vacation that ends in a chance encounter that appears to have unfolded in a familiar manner. Now properly freaked out, she hops hops into a car and runs through the key ring until she finds the right one. But as she takes a moment to find her center, Mick gives a little coquettish giggle before stabbing her through the seat. Liz also learns that one's hand is an insufficient tool to fend off a giant knife attack, and then Mick uses an old POW tactic to prevent any future running away by severing her spinal cord. Back in the wilderness, Christy wakes up and realizes Liz missed her timeline. Per instructions, she runs off in a direction to find a road. She then begins her first ultra marathon, but finds it difficult to keep her electrolytes up without a Gatorade station. Luckily, she's able to flag down a passing car, which is being driven by a well-meaning old dickhead. Unfortunately, he takes a tick too long to put two and two together together, and ends up taking a round through the eye. Chrissy then rushes to get the keys as Mick bears down on her, Mad Max style. With nothing but straightaway, he easily catches her, but then buggers about a little too long, Chevy Chase style, and runs off the road. Chrissy then celebrates too early as he shoots out her tire and flips her into a ditch. Then Mick casually guns her down and puts the bodies in the trunk before setting the car on fire. Meanwhile, back at the crib, Ben finally wakes up and finds he's been crucified, a special punishment for the men. Despite this being one of the top three most confusing ways to wake up, he gets right to work wriggling himself off the spikes. He emerges into the confusing hell the girls just lived through and takes off into the bush. Even if he dies, we know he at least gets to soak in a beautiful horizon and an eclipse. How lucky is that? Despite the abundance of natural beauty, he screams into the uncaring void, and eventually curls up near a little dirt road where a fine German family happens to find him. This is good because the locals are assholes, and after finding a town of sufficient size, he is airlifted out. Since this is supposed to be based on a true story, it ends by showing us that Ben was suspected of the disappearances, but he got off, and that despite some follow-up, nothing came of it. So Mick is presumably still freely wandering the wasteland. I have a website set up where you can support the channel through donations or merch, and I'd like to take a moment to give a huge thanks to my donors memorialized in the Hall of Headshots. Wolf Creek is a pretty good entry into the psycho redneck genre. It tries too hard to build character in ways that don't advance the plot, and the true story aspect seemed unnecessary, since they don't really lean on that through basically the entire movie. Otherwise, it had a solid core of intense melodrama, and it certainly didn't pull any punches in how it treated its protagonists. If you enjoyed the video, I'd love for you to become a part of the channel by subscribing. Thanks for watching.